My investment focus is in life sciences, which we define as therapeutics, diagnostics, research tools, and software and services that sell into the life sciences industry. And so when you think about AI in that, you can take the existing value train. How do people make novel medicines for people with serious unmet medical need and apply AI to every step in that journey? So from for therapeutic, think about target discovery to making novel chemical matter or making new proteins all the way through the clinical development journey. And at each step, there's an opportunity for AI to transform how that is done. The same thing applies to diagnostics, to software. A really simple example is in research, actually. Imagine an AI tool that can start by helping you write your grant, then help you ingest multimodal data from EMRs, from patient wearables, then help you analyze the data, and then help you write your publication. So that's a very simple example of the value chain of a life sciences researcher, where at every step, AI can enable you to have insights that you wouldn't be able to find before and produce research more efficiently. And at General Catalyst, our focus is on building enduring businesses. So we look for founders who have the potential to go from a first act to a second act to a third act to build something that's a platform that can be here for 20 years, 30 years, 100 years. And that actually is an incredible spark for competition because you can go from something that a naysayer says, well, hey, that's a feature to actually I've transformed how business is done. Sure, it started with one little thing, but then it built and then, and then, and then. That one little feature was the wedge that created initial adoption and enabled industry-wide transformation. If you go back to, for example, Regeneron or Genentech, when they were pioneering the antibody drug discovery industry, someone could say like, hey, well, those guys just figured out how to make antibodies. But, you know, can't Pfizer just start making antibodies? Pfizer makes small molecules. Why can't Pfizer just do it better? You know, it's new science, but Pfizer will figure it out. Well, it turned out by becoming the protein engineering experts, they were able to unlock entire new areas of biology, creating drugs for cancer, for autoimmune disease that were safer, more effective, and that probably couldn't have been made any other way if the world had stayed only focused on small molecules. So that's an example of how you can go from a single product or a single technology to a enduring business that makes medicines that matter. When we think about funding new companies, one of the questions we ask is, is this a take-share business? Or is this a market creation business? And both are hard. Like creating a company is uh, not easy. And so founders have to be tenacious. And in creating a new market, you have to teach people how to buy something they wouldn't have otherwise bought or how to use a research tool that they were never using before. And that's actually really hard, but you don't have competition directly because you're doing something that has never been done before. A good example of that is when 10x Genomics started offering single cell sequencing, people had really been only doing bulk DNA sequencing. They hadn't been looking at cells at the single cell level. So they had to teach scientists why does looking at a single cell matter and what can you do with single cell sequencing. So that's new market creation. The other option is take share. That's hard too because people are already doing something and you're saying, I want you to do it differently. I want you to change your convenient workflow, change your habit, and start using my technology because it's better or faster. I'm not a big fan of faster and cheaper. I'm really drawn to better and lets you solve a problem that you couldn't solve any other way. When you think about companies that need to take share, the most simple direct example is if you take a drug, for example, for EGFR positive lung cancer. Those words won't mean much to you unless you're a specific kind of researcher or clinician, but there's certain types of lung cancer that have a genetic mutation, and there's certain drugs you can make that target that genetic mutation where patients benefit from the drug. We're now on the third generation of multi-billion dollar drugs targeting EGFR. 
So if you were looking as an innovator and saying, well, there's already a drug for patients with EGFR, I'm not gonna touch it, then there would be a huge gap in medicine. The next generation of these therapies have been more effective, more durable, benefited more people. And so you have to say, I'm willing to believe that this product first is better, safer, more efficacious, and second, that I can change clinicians' behavior. They're already using a marketed drug. Can I bring them around to my new drug? And can I get insurers to pay for it? So that's not easy, but there are clear examples where innovation has said, and then, and then, and then, and the next generation of technology or the next generation of medicine has been able to displace the incumbent. And that's the good kind of competition, right? How can the US government promote innovation and investment in AI companies? That is a really hard and really broad question. So first, I have to start by admitting my bias. General Catalyst has a thesis around responsible innovation and responsible AI. So we believe that in order to build enduring businesses, you need to evaluate the intended consequences and the unintended consequences of the companies you support and how the market structure and incentives will influence their end impact on society. And we think that only those companies that have an impact on society that's beneficial or not destructive will be permitted to endure in the long term. So what can the government do? Well, I'm a huge believer in policy, and I'm not a policymaker, but it comes down to specifics, right? So at the base layer, the platform layer, there's a lot that can be done. It's outside of my expertise because I operate on the application layer. And on the application layer, one of the best things the government can do is ensure data portability, patients' rights to their data, and their ability to consent their data into research. And after that, there's this idea of algorithm portability. In the same way the government actually said, hey, you have the right to take your phone number wherever you go. And then, hey, you have the right to take your medical information from whatever health system you want to a different health system, from, what are in, from whatever insurer you want to a different insurer. Now imagine algorithms are developed to benefit you. Medical algorithms that say you're more likely to benefit from this treatment versus that treatment. Or, hey, a nurse should call you to check in because you're the kind of person who will really benefit from that personal contact, can you bring your algorithms with you? Uh, so that's something that regulators could support that would have a huge benefit to patients and also promote competition so that different companies can develop competing services and patients have the right to vote with their feet. Venture capital is all about the art of the possible. So at General Catalyst, we focus on a maker mentality. So investing in founders who are builders and then supporting them in our mission to transform the healthcare system from a sick care system to a healthcare system. So making care more proactive in bending the cost curve, delivering better efficacy at the same or lower cost and expanding health access and equity. And so by empowering founders, we give them the opportunity to leverage AI to tackle big problems in the healthcare system with new solutions that existing players might not be willing to try. And we really focus on transformation. So that's super important in healthcare. You have to think about how does this fit into the physician's workflow? How will this be adopted in a way that people can use it? And so I think the role General Catalyst and other venture capitalists play is in bridging that divide from how is healthcare, how is healthcare delivered today? So what does the existing system look like? And then what is the possibility of technology? And helping founders and technologists understand what is happening today and then believing that it's possible to change that. And so that's the art of transformation.